the devotion has been entirely given to the Ottoman Empire as this period forms the major part of the common historical experiences of the people from the Southeast Europe. The knowledge of the great empire that had dominated the Southeast Europe as well as the East Mediterranean for several centuries has been quite biased and erratic. The differences in the views of the Ottoman Empire by several historians of the world usually tend to waver between the grounds of retrogression and progress along with oppression and multicultural heaven, disaster and liberation. These clashing and interfering interpretations have been well reflected in the Western history of the specific historical period. The presentation of the Ottoman Empire as the common historical background did not imply the fact that it has been represented as the golden era of the harmonious coexistence of the individuals of the Balkan people. The common historical experience would include both the clash as well as the coexistence. In addition to this, the Ottoman Empire was not considered to be static and of the presence of the uniform entity. Along with several other multi-religious and the multi-ethnic empires, the Ottoman Empire too was marked by the presence of several internal clashes and contrasts and had evolved over time. It had gone through the phases of crisis and the advancements at the same time. Finally, a deeper knowledge of the Ottoman Empire had helped to subvert a widespread stereotype in the Western as well as the Christian Southeast Europe about the cultural backwardness of the Empire. The starting point of the history of the Ottoman Empire began around the 18th century when the Ottomans had appeared in the region and then had to conquer the Balkans. It has been assumed by the historians of the world that the end of the Ottoman Empire had happened around the time of the 19th century. However, this is not the exact time of the end of the Ottoman Empire. It coincides with the manifestation of the national movements that led to the creation of the Balkan states in the 19th as well as in the 20th centuries. The gradual collapse of the empires, including the establishment of the national states upon their subsequent ruins, had overlapped the occurrence of each other since the starting of the 18th century. The next part of the history of the Ottoman Empire covers the nation and the states in the Southeast Europe that deals with a highly sensitive and controversial issue. From the national movements that took place against the Ottoman Empire to the wars in the regions of the Yugoslavia, the conflicts among the various nations in the region had been quite crucial to the concept of the historical evolution of the same. There were strong arguments against the same in the history. There also have been a chronological approach followed in the study of the history of the Ottoman Empire that was used to for the determination of the following. The evolution of the definition of the nation. The chronological as well as the geographical span of the nationalist movements and hence concluding the differences among the same. The different phases of the formation of the national states in the Southeast Europe. There have been incorporations in the history of the Southeast Europe into both the European as well as the world history as the national state is central in the contemporary as well as in the modern history. The history of the Ottoman Empire has also witnessed the moment of the formation of the several national states in the regions of the Balkans and in the final collapse of the Ottoman Empire. At the same time, it was entirely considered to be a Balkan event that despite the outcomes was observed to be the proof of the ability of the people of the Balkan in the determination of their own destiny without any intervention from the great powers of the European province. It had also demonstrated the relative significance of the religion in the nationalist conflicts. For instance, if in the First Balkan War there had occurred a coalition of the Christian states against the Muslim Ottoman Empire, then in the Second Balkan War one of the opponents were not clearly defined by the religious faith. The history of the Ottoman Empire also covers the major events of the world history and thus, consequently, incorporates the regional history into the global context, reaches the moral objectives of the history. The Ottoman Expansion in Southeast Europe The Ottoman Empire had started its expansion around the time of 1300 in the regions of the northwestern Asia Minor. The expansion of the Ottoman Empire continued till the late 17th century. This was considered to be the last major conquest of Podolia in the year 1672. 
the expansion of the Ottoman Empire has transformed the small chiefdom of the semi-nomadic pastoralists into a bureaucratic empire of the world that have spanned over as many as three continents. Much of the portion of the Southeast Europe had been conquered during the time of the 14th and 15th centuries. However, some regions were conquered later, like that of the Banat, Slavonia, Crete and Cyprus while some other remained independent from the rule of the Ottoman Empire. These included the regions like parts of Dalmatia, Slovenia, Croatia and Corfu. For the people who resided in the region, the conquest by the Ottomans was considered to be a significant event. The conquest resulted in the shaping of the lives on both the long-term as well as a short-term basis. Several eminent historians have expressed various forms of conflicting opinions about this issue. Several historians have gone with the nation-centered views and opinions. However, the people during the time of the late Middle Ages have rarely viewed the world apart from the ethnic lines. The historians across the world have presented the conquests by the Ottomans as the series of military achievements with the people of the nation fighting continuously against their irresistible enemies. For the majority of the population, the conquest by the Ottomans was considered to be catastrophic for the people of the nation or for the majority of the European civilization. While some others, on the contrary, also regarded the Ottoman conquest as the grounds for the establishment of the Ottoman peace. Several other historians believed that the true nature of the Ottoman conquest was quite complicated. Several motivational, ethical and ethnic divides were mostly hazy. Several significant campaigns were combined with the warfare. At the local level, the perceptions and the motivations had differed significantly from the clear divides that were conceived by the modern historians. The securing of the collaborators was quite vital for the real fighting. Dedication, along with heroism to various realms, were considered to be the part of life along with cheating, cruelty and suffering. The First Phases of the Ottoman State in Anatolia Orhan's marriage to the daughter of the Tek War of Yah Hisar Osman Ghazi had given the daughter of the Tek War of Yah Hisar to his son named Orhan Ghazi. Her name was Ulufer Hatun. Orhan had by then become quite young and brave man. When the four castles were captured, including the Yah Hisar, Aya Nikola, Inago, and Bilekik, they had brought back equity and justice to the entire province. All the people of the villages had settled down to the places they belonged originally. The people began to have a better life than they had under the infidels. Upon hearing of the better lives of the people and about the praises of the infidels, several people from the other provinces also began to come. Osman Ghazi wanted to have a wedding such that he could give Ulufu Hatun in marriage to his son Orhan Ghazi. So he did the same. Ulufu Hatun was the lady who had built the bridge over the Ulufu Creek and when she passed away she was buried along with Orhan Ghazi inside the citadel of Bursa. The Capture of Karaka Hissa this is the depiction of how Osman Ghazi used to come to the Friday prayers in his own name and how it came to pass in the city. When Osman had captured Karaka Hisa, several houses in the city were left empty. Several people came from the Jaman province along with other provinces. These people had asked Osman Ghazi to provide them shelter. Therefore, Osman Ghazi gave them homes. Soon after, the city began to flourish. There were conversions of the numerous churches into mosques. Even a market was set up in the city. The people and locals of the city had agreed among themselves to perform the Friday prayers. There was a saintly man named Dursun Faki who used to serve as the imam for the local tribe. It was to him that the people spoke their hearts and minds. He came forth and spoke to the father-in-law of Osman Ghazi. But by then, Osman came up and understood what they desired. Osman gave the right and the title of Qadi. The Friday prayers were first read at the Karaka Hisa, where the individuals had performed their Bayram prayers. The First Phase of the Ottoman Conquest of the Balkan Peninsula The Contradictions Between the Christian States in the Balkans and Their Role 
Only Amorat, who was young and unruly, had survived. He strongly opposed the Bulgarians. He wanted the Greeks to let his pass. However, he was opposed by several boats and ships that were kept by Kantakuzin and was supported quite well, such as to have the Gallipoli ford. Amorat was forced to cross the sea. When Kantakuzin saw that he was not able to feed the soldiers on the boats due to the shortage of pork and bread, and because the treasury was getting emptied by each day with the silver and ducats becoming scarce, he sent his envoys to Turnovo. He sent them to the Bulgarian Tsar Alexander to ask for help for feeding his navy so that they can guard the ford. However, when they heard about this, the Bulgarians snickered and mocked the Greeks by insulting them, along with insulting their wives and mothers, and thus they sent the Greeks back. When Kantakuzin heard about this, he fell into a deep state of sorrow and grief, and then sent his envoys to the Serbian rulers named Urosh and King Vulkashin to ask help for his navy. Upon hearing this, they too ridicule the Greeks and send the envoys back with empty hands. When Kantakuzin came to know of this, he did not know what he should do. He therefore sent the envoys again to both the Bulgarian as well as the Serbian rulers, claiming that as they did not help him, they will regret the same. However, the rulers did not pay any heed to his words. They answered that when the Turks would get to them, they will defend themselves. It was then that Katakuzin made an agreement with Amurat that the Turks will never harm the Greeks who resided in Macedonia and Romania. Turks vowed to keep this promise, and thus Katakuzin let the Turks pass through the Gallipoli ford. The Role of Local Collaborators in the Expansion of the Ottoman Empire in the Balkans as per the accepted tradition, the climes that are held by the Sosmanos, who was the son of Alexanderos, had fallen on the Edern side of the river Danube. The province had extended on the outskirts of the Wallachia and the regions that lay on the far side of the Danube and that lay on the land of the Sosmanos. It was considered to be a wealthy and prosperous province. The province had supplied butter, sheep and honey to the entire world. There were several kinds of revenue as well as the production of goods in comparison to the other provinces that was enjoyed in excess. There is the story of the arrival of a person named Ali Pasha in the vicinity of the fortress of Provadia. It is said that Ali Pasha had gathered and raised the soldiers and then moved to Edirne for arriving at Eidos. The constable at Provadia, named Hussein Beg, was an infidel but was famous for his generosity. He welcomed Pasha and offered him great hospitality. The Pasha then crossed the Kamchi Creek and then arrived at Keneke Castle to rest for a day. After that, he descended into the vicinity of the fortress of Provadia. Along there, he had picked several soldiers for accompanying Yashibeg, who was the son of Temel Tars. He sent him to Provadia with dare of coming up and capturing Provadia. Therefore, Yashibeg arrived just outside the Provadia. Having entered the Tashisa, they broke into the castle during the night and therefore captured the castle. Then they sent a person named Murad to Ali Pasha with the news of the conquest. Next day, Pasha got himself onto the move and arrived at the fortress of Provadia. As the people watched his arrival, they brought him the keys to the stronghold of the castle. The keys to both Sumnai as well as Madara were brought and then surrendered. Pasha then went and entered the Sumnai castle and then reinforced the fortifications. 14th century Ottoman success of the Christians Some of the Turks compensated the weakness of their argument and presented captivity as the sign of the lack of the foundation in their religion. Because of the presence of the impious people who were infamous and hated by God, they boast of being victorious over the Romaioi due to their love for God. They did not know the world dwelled in sins, and most of it belonged to those who used to oppress their neighbours with the help of weapons. Therefore, till the time of the Constantine who used to trolly rule in the love of God, the idolaters had ruled the new whole world. Those who did not believe in the same said that they have conquered the lands of the Christians not because of their own intent and wisdom and not only because of their ham and not only because of their humbleness and sacredness. 
The main reason was due to the viciousness, sinfulness, and the haughtiness that had spread across the Christians. This is the reason why God Almighty destined them for conquering more lands, because the Christians did not establish their legislation to both the secular and clerical laws. With the laws, they had sought only the benefits and profits, as the rich oppressed the poor with the court manners, and did not help the poor with no property or justice. The rich also did not obey the rules of the religion that were left to them by the Messiah. The calamities and the misfortunes that had happened to them have all been determined by the god due to the viciousness and injustice. Tima, who was held by the Patro, was a relative by marriage to the scribe Yorgi. Under the rule of the deceased Sultan, it was Omer of Sultana who used to eat the same. Under the rule of the Sultan, the same was given to the present holder who used to hold the charter by the Sultan. Serbian Despot as the Ottoman Vassal, 1432 After the town of Krushevats, they had crossed the Morava River to enter the country of the despot of Serbia and Russia. This is situated on the other side of the river in the Turk. They arrived at a town named Nikodem that resembled a village. The ruler of the town came to ask on behalf of the Greek. The ruler of the town came to ask on behalf of the great Turk to send him his son along with the army that was quite customary. In addition to the tax paid by him, he was also obliged upon by the request of the Turks to send his second son along with around 800 to 1,000 horsemen. He also gave him one of his daughters as his wife. However, there were still fears about the entire country being taken away from him. Some people had mentioned the same to the Turk. The Fall of Novoproto, 1455 The Emperor left in 1455 and the besieged a city named Novoproto. This implied the meaning of the silver and gold mountain. He seized the city with the help of an agreement in which he had promised the citizens that he would leave them on the homesteads and that he would not take away the young women as well as the children. When the city actually surrendered, the emperor had ordered that all the gates should be closed. When the Turks had entered the city, they had ordered all the head of the families to come through the gate along with the whole family and left all the possessions at their home. All of the family members did exactly the same. The emperor was standing at the gate and made a selection and ordered the male children to come to one side and then the female children to the other. The men were then taken to the trench and the women were taken to the fourth side. Then he had ordered all the eminent men to be slain. The other people were free to return to the city and none other was prohibited from being in the city. There was a total of 320 young men and around 704 women. The women were disturbed among the infidels and the young men were taken by himself and were sent to Anatolia across the sea where they were kept. Turkish Destruction in Slovenia, 1491 There was many woes in the country all around the Smarje, in Karnak, Turjak, Ribnica, Kuspek, and several others. Everything was burned in these regions, and there was no doubt that the inhabitants and the cattle, along with the poor people, had barely gathered in the harvest and were ready for the threshing. They did not have anything to eat, as the grains along with string and hay were all burnt. As far as the other Turks were concerned, they were camping with the main troops near the regions of the Bela Kerkev. By the subsequent rubbing and burning, they were doing substantial damage and devastation. The whole country from the districts of Ljubljana was burned and destroyed. Captured Inhabitants of Belgrade, 1521 the lower regions of the Bosnia was highly mountainous with the presence of the large forests all around. Apart from a small portion of land, the region was poorly cultivated and was ravaged by the Croats and the other residents. When it was owned by the Christians, the authorities did not allow the same to be cultivated. But since the time of the conquests of the Turks, the greater portion of the lower Bosnia was cultivated. The Turks had come to the village of Kruščica in the middle Bosnia to spend the night. There were around twenty poor and miserable Christian children along with boys and girls who had been captured by the Turks earlier. The Fall of the Constantinople and the Conquest of Istanbul, 1453 
a Byzantine perspective of the fall of Constantinople. On the 4th of April, 1453, the Sultan had returned and then laid siege with several engines and stratagems to the city by the lands and sea. He surrounded the entire 18 miles of the city with around 400 large as well as small vessels from the sea and with around 200,000 men on the land. In spite of the great size of the city, the defenders amounted to around 4,773 Greeks along with around 200 foreigners. On 29th of May, 1453, the Sultan took possession of the city and the late master and the emperor of the city, Lord Constantine, was killed. Several individuals were taken the prisoner and suffered the evils of the forced and wicked slavery. The wives and the children had been passed into the possession of the elderly Turks and were sold out to the Mirajo of the Sultan. He had amassed a great fortune by the selling of several beautiful noble ladies. There were rumours about the preparations made by the Sultan before the siege as he was gathering his forces and the provision of aid from the Christians abroad. However, no form of any aid was dispatched by the Christians. The Emperor then consented to have the name of the Pope commemorated in the services of the individuals by necessity as they hoped to receive some kind of aid. It was after almost six months that the individuals received a good amount of aid from Rome as it was sent to them by the Sultan of Cairo. The Repopulation of Istanbul under Mehmed II The people who had newly arrived in the city were provided proper houses. As a result of this, Istanbul began to prosper. Then the newly arrived people were made liable to a mukata. It was quite difficult for the people to accept the same. Some of the people fled and left their children and wives. Sultan Mehmed had a slave named Kula Sahin who had been inherited to him by his father. The slave was once a vizier. He had informed the Sultan that his ancestors had conquered several places, but they had never installed a mukata. After hearing his words, the Sultan cancelled the mukata. The Sultan issued an edict that depicted that whoever was given a house should keep the same as their property. They have away all the documents to the people to the effect that their property was theirs only. As a result of this, the city began to prosper once more. People of the city began to construct complexes, mosques and several houses and buildings. The city began to develop. It was then that the Sultan had a vizier who was the son of an infidel. He came very close to the Sultan. The old infidels of Istanbul were the friends of the father of the vizier. They had captured the country which belonged to the father of the infidel. The vizier claimed that they should implement the mukata once more. The people should abstain from the building of new properties into the city. The city should remain in a ruined state. It should be in the hands of the vizier people. As a result of their claims, the viziers managed to influence the heart of the sultan. Once again, the Mukata was implemented in the city. One of the conspiring infidels was provided a pseudo-Muslim slave as his companion. They had kept the records in accordance with whatever the conspiring infidel said or claimed. Forced transfer of population from Asia Minor to the Balkans, late 14th century. As per the tradition, there were several nomadic households in the province of the Saruhan that were used to the winter in the plains of the Menemen. A salt monopoly had established in force during the climate. However, they did not abide by the monopoly of the Saruhan. As a result of this, the word was sent to the Sultan. Bayezid Khan then sent a word to his son named Ertugrul and informed him to bring all the nomadic households in the plains of the Menemen. He wanted them to be under the control and to have all the servants escorting them to the plain of the Philippi. Ertugrul abided by the orders of his father and then sent without any fail all the nomadic households to the plains of the Philippi. They brought them there and then made them settles around the plains of Philippi. Ottoman Promises for Bosnian Peasants, 1461-1463 the Turks had built several fortresses in the kingdom and were quite kind to the country folk. They even promised the freedom to every peasant who would convert to Islam. The simple peasants could not see through the cruel intention and believed that the freedom offered to them would last forever. 
Several individuals went over to the disgraceful faith of the Muhammad, as some were taken by fear, and others were driven by the flattery or were won over by the material gains. For some others, it was a process of enjoyment to join the enemies as they got lured by the cunning and foolish deeds. The Institutions of the Ottoman Empire The overall process of the conquest had changed the nature of the formation of the state of Ottoman. The tribal chiefdom had ended up as the empire of the world. From the perspective of the Ottoman Empire, the larger territories had required several new ways and methods for controlling, administering and then exploiting them. The ways as well as the methods were inspired by the Islamic political tradition and were then transmitted by the ulema, who were the Muslim scholars and legal experts. In addition to this, these were also transmitted by the Byzantine and the Mongol practices as well as by the practical experiences. In several ways, the Ottoman state and several of its institutions were quite hybrid entities. A strong allegiance to Islam was blended with a great need for the integration of various non-Muslim subjects and for the cooperation of the religious leaders such as to secure the smooth functioning of the overall Ottoman domain. The main ideology of the superpower of the Sultan then contrasted with the presence of the limited practical capacity of the central power for permeating the space as well as the social structures. In spite of all the imprecise and the constantly changing nature of the succession rules, the dynasty of the Osman had remained unchallenged for more than six centuries. The line of division between the public as well as the private sphere was quite serious in the organization of the Ottoman palace. The military system had combined several medieval features, including the warriors for fighting for the religious ideals, for revenues assigned to them through the fief system that was designed to make use of the insufficient economic resources. These were combined with the modern features like the cash-based and salaried standing army as this army merged with the medieval Islamic institution for the slave guards of the monarchy with an original system of the recruitment that turned the young non-Muslim subjects to a privileged social group who were proud of the special slaves of the imperial gate status. In the provinces, the authority of the military governors was balanced by the concrete administration of the judges that were recruited among the ulema and also by the practical self-government of several local communities. The establishment of the common institutions throughout the Ottoman Empire, however, did not put an end to the provinces and the particularities as well as the differences between them. The direct Ottoman rule had coexisted with the institution of the Christian states. For some of the states, the status of paying the tribute proved only to be a preliminary phase just before the full annexation, while for some other states it proved to be a lasting solution. The Ottoman Empire was an Islamic state. Therefore, it relieved heavily on the Sharia, Muslim law. Based on the Quran as well as on the Islamic tradition, Sunnah that was composed of the stories that recollected the way the Prophet Muhammad had acted on several occasions, the Muslim law had been developed during the Middle Ages and also later by the several scholars of the ulema. Even though several reinterpretations had conferred to the Sharia some sort of the adaptability, the Ottomans still preferred to add the same to the laws and regulations that were edited directly by the Sultan on the basis of the sovereign power. Unlike several modern ways of the law, these laws and regulations that we use for the forming of the Sultan law refer to as the Kanun. These did not come in the form of the systematic deductions from the higher principles. Instead, they were in the form of the compilations along with the reformulations of the customary law as a result of which they were also incorporated as the pre-Ottoman provincial customs. Although, in the theoretical sense, the power of the Sultan of the Ottoman was quite undisputed, the law of the Sultan was supposed to confirm the higher principles of the Muslim law of Sharia, including the most high-ranking Muslim scholars in the entire Ottoman Empire. He was referred to as the Say ul Islam and had to clarify the conformity of each law, order and even regulation of the Sultan. As the official ideology had insisted on the political tradition and stability, the Ottoman political system was not immune to several changes in time. The nature of this change is, however, greatly controversial. Some of the historians consider the fact that the changes that had occurred mainly after the end of the 16th century had represented a stage of decline from the perfect organization of the so-called classical age. 
other ideologists had argued that the changes had represented an adaptation of the challenges of the early modern age and were quite comparable to the modern formation of the state in other parts of the Asia or Europe. The Sultan and the Palace the Sultan of the White Sea, Mediterranean Sea, and the Dead Sea, along with the Padisha of the Kaaba, the Esteemed, and Medina, the Illuminated of Jerusalem, the Sacred of the Throne of the Egypt, and the Provinces of the Aden and Yemen, and Sana'a, and several others, were the established and esteemed countries as well as lands. The young brother of the Mehmed Neshri, named as Mustafa the Little, had received the land Hamid by his father, and had been adopted by the princes of the Jemayan. He was later on provoked by some of the ill-fated people. The princes Karaman and Jemayan had given him soldiers and he marched against the Bursa. When Sultan Murad had sent the news, his generals too sent a message to the Sabah. His generals too sent a message to the Sarabdar Ilas as they informed about the Sultan that had appointed him as the governor-general of Anatolia. They even sent him a diploma. They told him to divert the boy until their arrival. Sarabdar Ilas had opted for treason and thus accepted their message and stayed uptight. Sultan Murad rode in a great emergency and managed to reach Iznik. As the battle was going on, Ilias Bey took hold of the boy from the saddle of his horse. The chief constable named Mezid Bey took the boy in his arms and then took him to Murad Han. Murad Han ordered them to quickly finish their business. They took the boy from Mezid and then drowned him in water. Then the boy was buried next to his father. The Accession of Mustafa I to the Throne, 1617 As the Eternal and the omnipresent Sultan Ahmed Han had departed from the ruling of the world, his princes were quite young. His brother named Sultan Mustafa had just reached adolescence. As a result of this, Mustafa was enthroned on the date of the death of the Sultan. However, the commanders included the viziers, sheikhs, grandees, as well as the scholars were quite hesitant in paying homage to the new young ruler. Mustafa Aga, who was the Aga of the Gate of Felicity, had wielded great influence in the affairs of the state during the time of the Sultan Ahmed Khan. He was once again not lacking in giving to each member his due and raised his voice to inform the chief jurisconsult named Esat Effendi and the deputy Grand Vizier that the Sultan Mustafa Han was not sound in his reason and mind and therefore his thoughts and acts cannot be trusted. It was, however, maintained that if such a prince in the young manhood were to be passed over in the favour of putting the child to the throne, it would be quite impossible for the prevention of the rumours and that there will be several drawbacks to the same. It was also claimed that it was in these times that Sultan Mustafa, who had the rightful claim to the throne in terms of the dynastic descent, or if these claims were to be denied, then it would incur a strong reaction from the people all over. In addition to this, it was further argued that the mental disorder of the Sultan was as a result of the reason that he was imprisoned and was not allowed to speak to anyone for quite a long time. If he were to be in contact with people for some time, then there could have been chances that his mind and reason could be restored. This was how Sultan Mustafa of the Ottoman Empire came to be accepted as the Padishah of necessity. The Ottoman Empire had seen its rise as well as the fall of the entire empire during the historical turns of events that had occurred in the Ottoman dynasty. The decline of the Ottoman Empire or dynasty was marked by the Young Turk movement that had occurred during the time of 1908. This movement was a part of the strongly nationalist as well as the reformist group that also included several adherents in the army. This event had forced the restoration of the constitution in the year 1876. It was in 1909 that the parliament had deposed the Sultan and had put Mohammed V on the throne of the Ottoman Empire. There were two successive Balkan wars. It was in these wars that the Turks had lost all of the territories in the European nations along with Greece, Bulgaria, Serbia and newly independent Albania. The nationalism of the young Turks, the leader of whose was Enver Pasha, had gained great dictatorial power by some in the year 1913. This had further antagonized the remaining minorities in the Ottoman Empire. The outbreak of the World War I had resulted in the Turkey lining up with the Central Powers. As a result of this, 
Arabia had risen against the Turkish Empire as the British forces occupied the regions of Jerusalem and Baghdad. As a result of this, the Turkish resistance had collapsed in 1918 in the regions of Europe and Asia, and then an armistice was concluded that ended the Ottoman Empire. The Treaty of Services had confirmed the dissolution of the Ottoman Empire. As the Turkish nationals had won, they refused to accept the terms of peace and then overthrew the Sultan. The history of the modern Turkey thus began after the decline of the Ottoman Empire.